Hi, welcome to setting up the app. In this section, we're going to discuss camera setup, UI setup, and preparing to use MLKit. Camera setup. In this video, we're going to discuss Google Sample MLKit app, the camera implementation, and the graphic overlay implementation. If we open up Android Studio and we open the application that's available to download with the course, we're going to open up this class Live Preview Activity. Now, just so you know, this is Android's MLKit sample app. So one thing that I did change from the base download is that I changed the default launcher activity from chooser activity and I made it live preview activity. Essentially what chooser activity does, if we click into it, it gives you the option to either, as you can see here, the descriptions, vision detectors demo with live camera preview, which is what we're gonna look at. And the other option is vision detectors demo with a still image. So we won't be looking at this one for this course, but if you want to, you can go into it and take a look. So our app will default to live preview activity as the default launcher activity. Now for this video, we're just gonna take a quick breeze into the code and see what exactly it's trying to do. There are three main classes that we'll be looking at, camera source, camera source preview, and graphic overlay. And we'll come to learn what these do. Now the first thing we'll look at here is our onCreate class. This is all standard, you know, your set content view. Let's look at the XML for that real quick. So you'll see here, the preview doesn't really show too much, but just so you can see, it's all wrapped in a relative layout. And the first child is a camera source preview. So what the camera source preview is, it's basically a window, which is this gray area, which allows a camera feed to be displayed on your screen. You'll see that it has a child that's a graphic overlay, and that basically allows us to take the coordinates of the camera and to draw something over it. So for example, if I wanna draw something here, I can get that from the camera feed and I can say draw a square here or draw a circle here for example. After that here you have the bottom stuff over here. The text here is just some display like a title for example and then the bottle you have your controls. The spinner here, the toggle button is for switching the front camera and the back camera and then the spinner here as you'll see when we demo the app is for switching the different detector types such as label detection or face detection. Okay, so going back to live preview activity. We'll see here that we then create an instance of the camera source preview and the graphic overlay. We get them from the XML so that we have a preview and a graphic overlay. And then we simply set up the spinner and we set up the toggle button, nothing fancy there. And then finally, since we're running on a later version of Android, we have to check that we have our permissions. And if we don't, obviously we get them asking the user for them. And then we have your on request permission results so that once the user selects, yes, okay, I give you the permission, we can go back here and create the camera source. Now create camera source here, as you can see, it takes in a, a model, a string, which is called model. And basically it checks which string we passed in, whether it's classification, text detection, face detection, barcode detection, or image label detection. And then it switches the machine learning frame processor. We'll get more into that in the later videos. But basically we're telling the camera source, I want to detect barcodes here, and here I want to detect faces, and here I want to detect text. So that's essentially what this is doing here, and that's in the spinner widget on our main screen. And that's pretty much what live preview activity does. The rest of it is just some camera handling things. For example, in on resume, we start the camera source, pretty basic camera stuff if you've ever dealt with the camera. And then on pause, we're stopping it, et cetera, et cetera, we're getting the permissions. So let's start looking at camera source. So camera source here, as we said, it's basically like a helper class that is used in, in this application to handle all the camera stuff. 
I don't know why, but they decided to use the old camera implementation. You'll see here, even it's crossed out, it says android.hardware.camera is deprecated and we should actually be using camera two. I don't know why they're not using it in the sample application, but you can use camera two in your own application if you desire. So camera source holds an instance of camera and it also holds an instance of vision image processor. As we just discussed, vision image processor is basically, it's an interface that allows us to process ML detectors. So you'll see here, if we look at some of the implementations, we have barcode scanning processor, we have face detection processor, text recognition processor. So all of these implement vision image processor in their own way by implementing these four methods here. We'll get more into that in later videos. So essentially camera source, as you can see, it's a very, very large file. It has 732 lines. And basically, we don't need to get into the details of it. You just need to know that camera source handles the camera. Moving on, we're going to look at camera source preview. So camera source preview is sort of the feed that allows the camera feed to be shown. So here we have a camera source and a surface view. These are our two main components, as well as a graphic overlay. So the surface view is the UI widget that allows a camera feed to come through. The camera source is giving us the feed so that we can display it in the surface view. And then graphic overlay is just another layer of UI that's allowing us to display things on the camera feed. Again, we don't need to be boggled up in the implementations here. I just wanted to quickly go over it just so that we're aware of what's happening. So it's starting and stopping the camera source, you know, on stop and things of that nature. Start if ready is checking a bunch of different things such as the permissions, etc. And then it's starting it. And yeah, I mean, the camera implementation is sort of beyond the scope of this course, but it is here. It is pretty straightforward stuff. You can Google, you know, how to work with the surface view, for example, if you want to go over it. And that's pretty much camera source preview. And now looking at graphic overlay. So graphic overlay, it's basically another UI layer that allows us to draw things over the camera feed. So we'll see here that it is it gives you things like the preview width and the preview height and then it does a bunch of different modifications such as translations and scales and things of that nature to to get the image coordinates properly and you can see here that it has on draw method which takes a canvas obviously all views have this method but this allows us to, this is the method that actually draws the stuff onto the, the camera feed. So I actually have an emulator here running the application and I'm basically going to give a quick sample of it since we know what it does. So that's me. Hi. And as you can see, I have face detection on and it's, although it is sideways, let me fix that. And as you can see, face detection is working. So it's detecting my right eye and my left eye and the happiness level and the ID. So the ID is the face that it's looking at. Since I'm the only face on the screen, I'm getting ID zero. And this is a, a cool thing. It detects happiness as well. So when my face is just still, you see happiness goes to almost zero. But if I smile, it goes to 0 0.98 so it's almost that one detecting hey this guy's really happy so if we click on face detection and we change it to text detection for example i have my copy of effective java here and you can see if i can bring it on the screen it picks out the words very clearly the name even joshua blotch is there the, all the words if i bring it down it'll pick up sun there from the source java so it the text detector picks up text it's actually picking up some of the stuff on my board there as well if we look at barcode detection let's go back to effect of java and if 
we show it our barcode, you'll see here it'll pick up the barcode perfectly. So this is cool. This can be used to do things like checking the prices of whatever barcode item you may have, for example. And if we look at label detection, so there's two things here, label detection and classification. Essentially, the difference is label detection allows us to label things in the screen. So if I click on it, once it loads there, it's just it's showing white. So I'm just going to put up my phone here. And you can see here that it's showing, you know, selfie, goggles, beard, glasses, cool, thinks I'm cool, <laughs> a hand, mustache, nails. So it's just labeling things that it sees on the screen. And if I switch to classification, so now with classification, it's trying to, it's giving us a strength of what it thinks is the most prominent thing on the screen. So for example, here, if I put up, just so you have a black background, you'll see it shows sunglasses, beer glass, it thinks it's there, spatula, and it gives you that number. So that number is sort of the strength the if there's one clear thing in the image it'll tell you it'll have a higher number so it'll be closer to one maybe 0 0.9 for example and then you can say you're looking at the eiffel tower for example or at a car and then this button here just switches the camera from the front to the back my emulator doesn't have multiple cameras so clicking it won't do anything and that's essentially the application that we're going to be going through. As I mentioned, the, the main thing where the different detectors come in are the vision image processor. And this is where we'll spend the bulk of our time looking at these different implementations.